Hi folks, this is Jay, hope you're okay today. I just want to talk about Jonathan Wells' Icons of Evolution. And he wrote a book where he shows that the evolutionary textbooks have had a lot of information that have been debunked, and yet they still publish it in the evolutionary textbooks. So he talks about 10 icons, uh, the Tree of Life, uh, homology, um, the... Um, reptile and bird tissue, um, the mo uh, moths that were used to prove evolution but have now been debunked, uh, Darwin's finches, natural selection, any uh, various fruit, fl fruit flies, fossil horses uh, from ape to human. You, it, throughout his book he, he, he touches on a lot of subjects showing how these things have been debunked and yet are still published um in in books today so he, he, here's what he has to say the third icon of evolution that i wrote about is homology in vertebrate limbs if you look at the bones in the human hand the way they're constructed and put together their their structure and positions and you compare that to a bat's wing, or a porpoise's flipper, uh, or any number of other vertebrates. The structure and position of the bones are actually strikingly similar. You can sort of match them up one for one. And uh, this was recognized before Darwin by pre-Darwinian biologists and called homology. It's different from another sort of similarity called analogy which is that, say, between a bat's wing and a butterfly's wing. Although they're both wings, and they're both used for flying, the internal structure of the bat's wing is quite different from that of a butterfly. Radically different. And so, analogy was not used to classify organisms, whereas homology was. When Darwin came along, he attributed homology to descent from a common ancestor. So common ancestry rather than common design. And this was at the core of his theory. He considered homology some of the best evidence for his theory, these sort of similarities in structure and position. And in fact, that's how paleontologists arrange fossils, depending on their anatomical similarities and differences. Even for the molecular comparisons, we're still talking about homology in the sense that we're comparing similarities and differences of, in this case, DNA sequences or protein sequences. So homology is at the heart of the evidence for Darwinian theory, that is, descent with modification from a common ancestor. One problem with the reliance on homology as evidence for Darwin's theory is that we have some things that appear to be homologous, but which we know or we believe do not come from a common ancestor. For example, the human eye and the eye of an octopus are actually quite similar. And yet nobody believes that the common ancestor of humans and octopuses had an eye like that. So there are cases, there's actually many cases in the biological world, of structures that appear to be homologous, but which do not come from a common ancestor. Okay, so that um, is Jonathan Wells, and I'd encourage you to get hold of his book icons of evolution and I think you'll find it a real interest